Okay, I'd like to open the town forum at 6.30. Is everything on? Um, yeah, we, we need to, um, you need to get rid of that. We need to get rid of the recording announcement. Is that you? Yeah. That? Oh. Is that the no recording on the town forum? No, we, we just want to make the announcement go. Uh, no, no, we, we can record it. Yeah, yeah we have we to. We just want to make sure everything was on. Yeah. Everything on? This is a momentous occasion. Amy is here. So Amy's oh, Amy's here. Oh, we got a forum. Okay. Not that we need one. Hi. Uh, um, okay. Are there any additions to the agenda for the town forum? Don't see any. Public comment. And we will open the forum with a review of and discussion of 2023 town meeting articles. So, who do we have that would like to ask questions? I see a lot of people up there. Can you hear us? We're getting thumbs up and Amy is gently nodding her head. Amy can hear us, that's good. Okay. Anybody else? We so, see we can start. You conventionally do a dry run of the select board report. Oh, gee, where is that? It's not in this thing. It's in the town report. Yeah, here. <laughs> wow. Do you play air hockey? It's dangerous. Mm. Select board report. I'm going to open up the town forum with select board report that may trigger some questions. Um, so I think the biggest thing that happened in the town was the town office. We had three people retire, Bruce Johnson, Don Welsh, and Denise Sparrow. Um, so since they retired, we've had um, some changes, of course, in the town office. We now have Gina Jenkins, who is the um, town administrator. We've got a uh, Michelle Palace, who is a town treasurer, and the municipal assistant position is still open. We had one person st started there, but she decided to move on. So we only have um, Denise, we have uh, Gina and uh, uh, Michelle in the office as new people at the moment. Tyson. Oh, we have Tyson right. The zoning administrator, which Bruce was doing before, we have Tyson Brown in that position. So actually we have three new employees in the town office and eventually there'll be four. Uh, so that is a huge change. It also changed the, um, it's changed our overhead as far as the salaries go. We've had to um, get more health insurance, buy more health insurance for new employees. So that's pushed up that expense significantly. Come on in. Thank you. Uh, so that's the big news, really. Um, we still have a good road crew that's been steady and uh, roads are doing well. And we did a big repavement on County Road. We placed a bunch of culverts and we got some funding from the state. It was really expensive, uh, but it, it came out well in the long run. Some people were frustrated because uh, it was a slow process, but eventually, it went well and it's done. Um, the other thing that we do have is we got a lot of ARPA money, about uh, 762560 We contributed 100000 to CV Fiber, and we still have the bulk of that money, which um, we're still trying to figure out what we can use it for. Uh, so that's a big chunk of change. Um, Hopefully we can put it into a project that the town benefit everybody in the town. Um, the fire department's gone through a lot of changes. They um, replaced Ty Rowland with Larry Brown. Larry Brown retired somewhat unexpectedly. And uh, now we have Albert Petrella in there as fire chief. He's just uh, interim until they have a vote in May. Uh, but Albert uh, is doing an excellent job and uh, just wanted to reassure everyone that the fire department emergency services seem to be running well. Um, 
So that is a few changes, but it doesn't seem to have uh, made the service, you know, less reliable. And so the big news, the other news is, of course, our budget has gone up. Um, and mostly because we had to hire new people in the town office and health insurance has gone up 20% and more people are taking health insurance. So that's, um, those expenses are really hard to, they're really, it's impossible to reduce those expenses um, in this environment. So that is going to impact the tax rate a bit. Um, and unfortunately the school tax rate is gonna go up too. So it looks like there'll be a significant jump in the tax rate. Um, so any questions? Anybody? Shall I call? I see a lot of names up there mm -hmm. zooming in and I, we really would like to answer any questions that you have. Seth, this question actually might come up. When you said that taxes are expected to increase, do you know exactly by how much? I mean, not exactly, but approximately. Yeah, well, um, no. So on the budget side, on the municipal side, we're looking at around five, five and 5.6 cents, or is it 5.8 no, cents? 5.8 cents. It's 8.6 tax percent increase. It's 5.8 cents in the tax rate. That is a um, that's kind of a guess. It could be less. It's probably going to be less than that. Um, there has been some discussion on using some of the ARPA money for some of the uh, one-time expenses that the towns incurred in the last year or two, and also moving forward. So if we have a one-time um, expense like digitizing the uh, land records or something like that we could put some of that ARPA money towards that, which could reduce the tax rate. So that's sort of, we're still exploring the um, uses, allowed uses for the ARPA money. And so that may be an offset to keep the tax rate a little lower than it's projected. Great answer. Thank you. Anybody else? Love Seth, we go over article by article like we've done in the past, or you're just yep, opening it up. We sure can. Let's do yeah, that. I, I don't know that I feel, you know, but that's usually how we've done it at the. Um, yep. Okay. So, that, our, that, just so you know, that's what we're doing right now, Rachel. The, the okay. article two, the town officer reports, and Seth has yep. been giving us like. Yeah. Board. Great, but thank um, you. if there's no more questions on the select board report, then we can move down on the articles. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the next um, one is is the FY. What is there another question on the site board report? Well, actually, yeah, because I, I I had trouble getting in. That's why I'm late. So, oh, um, fine. I don't know if this question goes under select board report or other business, but I did wonder about that ARP, ARPA money. That was the Recovery Act money that we got. Yes. So I just wondered the select board's plans for that. And okay, um, so what what we've done so far is we got around seven hundred and sixty two thousand dollars. We put $100,000 towards CV fiber because we realized that internet access is important to all the citizens, broadband access to everybody in East Montpelier. So that leaves about 600 and something thousand dollars. Now there is some of that that we could use um, for some items that are just a one-time expense in the town to offset the tax rate increase. That so that's, okay, that's what we're looking into right now because there's a lot of rules around the ARPA money, what mm -hmm. you can use it for and what you can't use it for. So eventually there should be a, a significant portion of that money that could be used for a project in town. Okay, well, will the select board notify us so we can all say what we, you know, our- uh, Well, yes, that's, that's our intention. We have, we have talked about, uh, once we have clear, how this money can be used, then we'll say, okay, this is what our town plan says about the future of East Montpelier. What opportunities are there to meet the town plan with this money? Any other ideas for using this money? We'll be looking for citizen input. Great. Thank you. I'll be quiet now. Okay. So any more questions on the select board report specifically? Okay. So let's just go down the articles and then we can go from there. So the next article three is FY 2024 budget. What do we have for questions pertaining to that? 
Nothing? Okay. Property tax protocol. That's when you can pay your taxes, whether you can you have the postmark on the envelope or you have to come in um, personally and deliver it before five o'clock. I think we're with the postmark protocol, I believe. Yeah. Um, does anybody have any questions on that? Okay. Uh, Article five is the Kellogg Harvard Library Appropriation. Now, I guess I want to alert everybody to the fact that it's not on the Australian ballot. It got left off by accident. We're going to have to have a separate vote on that. And it has to be done 30 days after town meeting. So we have to have another uh, town, another meeting, which would be a select board meeting. We have to have a, to adopt a resolution that says we're going to have a separate vote on the Kellogg Hubbard Library appropriation. Then we'll have to run an election. This is going to run in the, in the office here for that separate article. May I clarify the remarks? Sure. So it's going to be a special town meeting that will have, have the vote just on Australian ballot on the Kellogg Hubbard Library item and the select board after town meeting, so at our next meeting, we will uh, pass the motion to, to uh, set that uh, date. And uh, and then you'll all be getting ballots for that. So just one ballot. What? Yeah. The one ballot. Yes. 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 And the, the actual voting will take place in the town office that day because it's a small, small election. And that way everyone can stay down here and do the other business in the office. And I, I think we have a hand up there. Yeah. Somebody else. Oh, yeah. Hi, I'm Sarah Swift. I just wanted to introduce myself. I'm the new um, representative to the Board of Trustees from East Montpelier. And thank uh, Jennifer Micah for her three years of service uh, and uh, uh, reinforce what was said about Article 5. Um, <clears throat> just a reminder that this will be level funding. It's the same amount um, that we asked for last year. Um, and the libraries had a very strong year. Um, I'd be happy to answer any questions. Carolyn uh, Brennan, our um, one of our executive co-directors is also uh, here on on uh, if anyone has any specific questions. Thank you. Okay, no more questions on Kellogg Hubbard Library. The next article seven, East Montpelier sign post appropriation. This four corner school. Oh yeah, I did. Article six, four corner schoolhouse association appropriation. That's about the same, I think, four thousand something, isn't it? Any questions on that? Uh, the next one, Article seven, is East Montclair signpost appropriation. Any questions on that? Nada. I don't see any hands. Uh, Article 8, East Montpelier Trails Incorporated Appropriation. I'm here to answer any questions. On East Montpelier Trails? Right. So for those who can't see him, that's Richard Brock, East Montpelier Trails here. I have a, I have a question. This is Erica Zimmerman under Kevin McAllister's name. Um, is that, is this the right? Sorry, Hi. I don't understand that. As uh, Erica Zimmerman, yes, she's right. under Kevin McAllister's name right there. In the yeah, there we go. Sorry. Okay. Um, okay. I'm one. I'm wondering if there's any consideration for um, the town helping the trails with cleanup after the storm. Um, I, I think the if if the town is kind enough to pass the appropriation, that should be sufficient. There is a lot of work to do, however. Yeah, trees blown down, I imagine. Uh, was your question, Erica, about town employees or about rallying volunteers from throughout the town? I was thinking more of um, town employees or funding. Is there, um, you know, town operations money that could help with the uh, restoration of the trails? Well, Richard Brock said there was enough money. I don't, the, the Board of East Montpelier Trails does not believe that at this time it needs to ask for anything further. Thank you. Okay. I appreciate your talk. 
because there aren't really town employees that could go out and clear the trails anyway. Right. Well, I don't know if there's hauling or anything, but you know, that could be done. But I just want I guess it's my my uh wish that if the you know the the trail committee operates on a pretty slim budget and it's got a pretty huge task. So to whatever extent the town could help, I would hope it would. Well, thank you. We appreciate your concern. And and I think we show that that willingness by voting for appropriations. Voting the appropriation year after year is yeah. a big help. Yep. Okay. Okay. Great. Thank you. Oh, another hand. Sandal Kate. Oh, Sandal Kate. Yep. Hi. Um, Hi. So along the same topic, um, I do know that over at U32, there's a lot of trees. There are a lot of trees down, a lot of damage in that area. And I don't know quite how that ties in with all the trails that are considered East Montpelier Town trails. Um, I know that there have been people over there trying to assess the damage and then figure out how to get it cleaned up, but it's going to be a massive job. And so I didn't know if any of the ARPA funds could go towards that. Um, I think some of the U32 maintenance staff have looked at it. The county forester has looked at it. Paul Kate has looked at it. Um, but it's going to take some serious equipment and, and cost coverage to deal with the mess over there. I don't know what, I don't know quite how that um, lines up with the, with our town's responsibility. That's my question. Okay, so I met with the county forester over there at U32 because there's a question on my farm that I own over there in the line. So they're having a skitter come in there and start moving those trees out, like right away. They'll be there for a while, right on U32. On all but the trees are down. Who's going to pay for that work? What's that? Seth, do you know who's going to pay for that work? The uh, the count the loggers moving in there. They're going to get some money out of it because a lot of the stuff you can sell. So you're hoping that the stumpage, I mean that that they'll meet their expenses by um, har by doing the harvesting. My understanding is that they're actually selling the stumpage to the logger who's going in there to clean it up. So it's not going to cost anybody any money. They may make some money on it. Huh. Okay. That's what they told me. I have a thought to add on that. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the board of East Montpelier Trails uh, discussed this issue yep. at our last meeting. And uh, just the there's a lot of business now for foresters and loggers. So it's going to take a while. And part of the delay is that, as Chair Gardner has mentioned, many of these down trees have sale value. And they belong to the landowners, not East Montpelier Trail. So it will take a while. Yeah, that's right. But they were moving a skitter in like the day I was over there, which was a Good. week or so. Those are U32 trails. Yeah. As yeah. you as you probably know, there is a short section uh, that is actually East Montpelier Trails that goes from your property out to Wheeler Road. Yes. But yeah. But I said to go on my land and take the trees. I said just keep them separate and. You can take the top of the tree if you want to give me some stuff for the logs, great. Great. So then that's what they're going to do. I said, you see any down trees on my land, go for it. So great. it seemed like they're going to do a good job. He said they're going to be there for a while. Yeah. So that's my information. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Any other uh, questions on the trails or comments? I don't see any of you. No. Okay. Um, the next article nine, Montpelier Senior Activity Center Appropriation. Yeah, town meeting tomorrow. I can I think they may be at town meeting to answer questions. That's what they said. Yep. No hands on that. I don't see any. Article 10, Twin Valley Seniors Incorporated appropriation. You know, this is the one towards Plainfield. It's completely separate from Montpelier. Twin Valley. Any questions? Any questions? Article 11, Central Vermont Home Health and Hospice Appropriation. 
Questions, questions, comments? Article 12, Rural Community Transportation Incorporated Appropriation. This is for the bus service. This is separate from the service that goes to people's houses and brings seniors to appointments. This is a separate service. This is the bus that stops down here at the park and ride, RCT. Um, One thing. Yep. Is this the first year that Article 12 and 13 have been separate, or did we do that last year, too? I don't, I don't remember. Explain that. Yeah, I don't but, remember. But uh, th this is an appropriation. Article 12 and 13 together represent an appropriation that the town has made for, off the top of my head, I'm not sure exactly, but eight or 10 years, I would guess. And uh, and that's for what's described in there for the commuter bus service along Route 2. Uh, in the past, originally for many years, maybe up until last year, it was uh, one article. And now uh, we've divided it up, or they've divided it up between themselves with rural community transportation, asking for what uh, percentage of what we've been appropriating and GMP asking for the rest. And it comes to level funding in, in nominal dollars. So when you think of inflation, it's really a, a cut in the funding. Yep, Rachel. Um, so I think it was actually two separate articles last year. And I'll just yeah. plug for the bus because it's a great bus, the Route 2 bus. Um, it's just a great service to the town. And I don't know if it's still free um, on the RCT end, but. Um, for I think a long time. I heard anything yeah, I think it's still free. Yeah, here to St. Yeah. Jack. So, yeah. And so the next article 13 is a Green Mountain Transit appropriation. No questions. Oh, so the next article 14 funding request study committee recommendation for appropriations to organizations. And there's a whole list of them. Uh, I don't have them before me, but they were vetted by the funding request study committee. They um, had people come in, talk about what they wanted, did a nice thorough job, and that's what they came up with. So that's quite a list of uh, organizations. Does anybody have any questions about those organizations? Nothing. Article 15. Tax exemption for the 0.68 acre trailhead parking area on Vermont Route 14 South, owned by East Montpelier Trails Incorporated, East Montpelier Gully Jumpers Incorporated. They've had tax exemption for a while. Evidently, it has to be voted, what, every five years or something? That's what we're told. Yeah, yeah it has to be voted as tax exempt every five years. Um, that's what we're presented with. It's uh, not a very controversial item, but if anybody's got any questions, we're willing to answer them. The idea is that they're managing that piece of land for the benefit of everyone in town. It's a trailhead. Everyone, I think, knows where it is right across from the Central Vermont Humane Society. It used to be an old grain store there, as I remember, mm -hmm. and there was a railroad siding there. No longer. Um, Article 16, at the business. Don't all speak at once. <laughs> And we had one topic, Mr. Duane, that we had talked about bringing up. Do you recollect what it is? I do not. Okay, I did not bring my notes on that. I thought of a topic, too. We had a topic that we had planned to bring up. I bet mine was different than yours, but I can't remember. <laughs> we will do a little homework. You um, betcha. <laughs> oh, tell me he's tomorrow. Whoops. Yeah. <laughs> I've got our comprehensive minutes, have <laughs> Mr. Dwayne, I'm not recalling. Okay. Wasn't it uh, COVID? Oh, heck no, that subject's way long. It, that train already left. It might, it might have been. On was it COVID? Town meetings? Yeah. I thought it was something else. Yeah. It was something else. Okay. Well, the most important thing is the lunch. Was it about the lunch? <laughs> we decided to have the lunch. Right. Well, yeah. They decided. Um, Can I ask like a process question? Sure. Questions are welcomed. It doesn't matter whether they're pertinent to the subject or not. <laughs> um, I just moved to East Montpelier from Montpelier. So I've never actually lived in a town with a town meeting before. Um, and I'm having a hard time, I guess, 
it looks like from the ballot, I can vote for like officers and positions and article three, but everything else happens on the floor of town meeting. Is that true? Um, anything over $25,000 has to be voted by Australian ballot. Oh, so um, the budget gets voted by Australian ballot town officers. Um, what else? Kellogg Public Library. Library is over 25,000. Yeah. And yeah, there's a few things that are on the ballot and some are voted to town meeting. All right. Uh, are you going to go to town meeting? I can't. I have to work tomorrow. So I just. See, that's why I want everything Australian ballot. <laughs> <Sir>. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I invite you as a new resident to the town to try to make uh, your schedule available for coming to town meeting next year because town meeting is a special opportunity to discuss the items with the people who are your fellow town residents and for a day legislators. And you have a dynamic at town meeting that you don't get by checking off boxes on a ballot. Yeah, but you have a lot more people participating when they vote by Australian ballot. So it's quantity it's or quality. Standing discussion. It's a lot. It's, it's okay. Though. It's a good picture discussion. We are on different ends of that. We are. But anyway, do you have any more questions on that subject? Uh, I don't know. Thank you. I wish you could go to town meeting. Uh, Me too. <laughs> yeah. They have a good lunch. I'll try to make it next year. Okay. We can always have a discussion about whether to change it. You know, uh, that's a good discussion. Actually. But Saturday. But the problem is that Saturday, on Sunday, a meeting. 160 people go to town meeting, and there's 2,500 voters, or not quite, 2,300 voters in East Montpelier. So you're excluding them from the discussion. Very many of them could go if they wanted to. Well, the thing is that's happened is you have to accept the fact that a lot of people are not going to go to town meeting for one reason or another. That's right. So that's when you have to change your thought about how democracy is going to work in the town. Speaking as a resident, yeah. some people who have very limited time off as well with a job, that mm -hmm. would require them to take a vacation day off of work, yeah. and a lot of people may not be able to spare that day. Right. So it, it, towns have experimented with putting town meeting on a Saturday yes. or a Sunday, and they found that people say, oh, it's a weekend day. I don't want to take a day of my weekend to go right. to town meeting. Right. So, so people so, don't prioritize participating yeah. in the town there's nothing that we can do to force them to do that yeah but by mailing ballots to people in the town we have gotten a lot more people to participate and you know oh. we had over a thousand people thousand ballots last year and then uh, the question mailed. is the quality of the participation quality versus quantity is that fair though oh, is it so, fair to say oh, about quality sorry, we're talking about yeah. yeah. <laughs> so and we have some time and it's nice that there's enough people here that can listen to us so, so, yes, there is. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Before he took it to hello him. hello so one possible solution that would have been um a good thing and i think it's too late to even push for this if is if the state had made town meeting day a state holiday um that and and put in some incentive for private businesses to give people the day off yeah. um but I think too. I think it's too late for that. I think too many towns have gone to Australian ballot, and um, town meeting is not what it used to be. That's correct. So that's my two cents. I thought yeah. it was a state holiday. I think it is. <laughs> well, I think state state workers state the state office buildings I think are closed, but yeah. there's no incentive for um, anybody else to give their workers the day off to go to town meeting. All right. And, it would have been nice. It's to an show. optional holiday for the state, actually. Is it? Yeah. Yeah. But maybe that train has already left the station, is what you're saying. I think so. Yeah. yeah I, I, I agree. We had some great town meetings back in the 80s and the 90s. Yeah. But VPR did a special on it today, so it might be worth listening to. Mm. At noon, they asked towns and residents what what the whole what town meeting day should look like and what we're we're going to have to face in the future. Hmm. I'll listen huh. to that. Thanks, Kim. Well, it's definitely an interesting subject and controversial too. So we could bring that up on another business, we which we did tonight, sort of. 
There's a comment from Scott Hess to everyone. Um, somebody wanted to share that. What's the comment? Go ahead. I can't see it. Gina, do you have the possibility of sharing the comments? You said you can, you can, you can see it on Zoom. That's what his comment was. I thought yeah, the town meeting was going to be on Zoom. I thought that we weren't able to. Are, are we able to Zoom in tomorrow? I'm not. I'm actually not going to be able to go. I, I need to be careful for the next. I don't think we have that. No. There's a live stream, but not a Zoom. We have a live stream, but no Zoom. That's oh. a quick. So you how can, do you, you, can, you can view it, but you can't vote. But how what do you if we get in town meeting and you're not there? <laughs> how, how do you watch it tomorrow? There's a link that was sent out by from Porch Forum. Okay. Said live stream, so. Right. Okay. Oh, okay. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. All right. So I have a process question. Uh, we're, we're getting these comments in the Zoom commenting, and I don't know how to handle those from a public meeting perspective. Uh, we're, we're recording this, but those are not going to be part of the recording unless we stop. For no, the somebody's got to read them off. Yeah, I'm wondering right. if we should just uh, close down the comments, make it not possible to comment, and say if you want to comment, you need to raise your hand and speak like everyone else so they can be part that of the That doesn't sound very nice. Well, how, how else are we going to get into public record? <laughs> I want to make sure that didn't mean it to sound that way. Somebody's got their hand up. I think it's Don Welch. Yeah. Yes, Don. Uh, I don't know if it's appropriate at this point in time, but I was just wondering if there's been any uh, action movement on the uh, town garage improvements. Uh, I was just thinking about that today. When Guthrie slows down a little bit, we're going to go visit. We We had a meeting up at the town garage. Oh, a month or so ago, and we decided to go look at some garages, and that's where it sits right now. But since he's been really busy, I'm busy, we're going to go when things are a little bit slower. Up to Cabot, and we identified some garages we had to go look at. So that's where it's at right now. Good. Yeah, we'll go in. The town administrators expressed interest, too, so it'll be a regular party, I think. But that's going to happen. Good, because uh, the town garage is something that it's a big project, and it does need help. It does need, it needs to be uh, replaced probably. Are you going to have a form a committee for that? We could, but first we're going to have to come up. We're already already decided to come up with a design, so we've moved to that part of it. I thought we had a committee. Wasn't John going to kind of spearhead that? Yeah, John's on too. Yeah, I guess yeah, we have a committee. Like we have a committee. John and Guthrie. Me, John, and Guthrie. Yeah. 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 Good. And you. Yeah. So we, we kind of have a committee of four so far. It's Gina, Guthrie, John, and myself. Four. So we're we're plodding along on that project. And John is John Jewett Select Board. John Jewett, Select Board member. Yep. Any other questions about that? No. Nope. Uh, anything else? Yes. Uh, Mr. Mr. Wayne. Thank you. Speaking. Mr. Chair. Uh, our state representative, Ella Chapin, is going to be at town meeting. Yeah. She'll be there probably about 11 o'clock. Okay. Hopefully we're still there. I know. I think we will be. I don't know. I'm not so sure. Well, we'll see. Nine thirty. Nine thirty to eleven. That's an hour and a half. Yeah, that's not much to talk about. No, either. we can always talk about other business, whether or not to move town meeting. That'll take up a bunch of. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's okay, though. It is okay. It's fine. I think it's great. I do too. Controversial subjects are always fun. See different points of view. Yes, it sharpens your own. Actually, at the end of the day, it does. Uh huh. Uh, any more questions? Comments? Uh, uh, yes, sir. Mr. Duane again. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, are, are you going to present the uh, select board's report tomorrow? I will. So I, I will turn to you. Thank you very much. Okay. Yes. And, and yeah. it's possible there may be other officers to present reports. There may be. Yep. There doesn't seem to be anybody stepping up at that point, but there could be a surprise and someone has another report. 
Mr. Brock said he'd be there tomorrow with regard to the trails. Oh, and, very good. Uh, yes. Ms. Ms. Swift, the new uh, yep. Kellogg Hubbard rep, and I were communicating today, and she's going to be there to answer any questions as need be. Very good. Sandal has something to say. Oh, Sandal. Um, oh, she does. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, she's good. Yeah, I, oh, I'm not. Mean? Yeah. Yes, Sandal. Yes. Okay. Um, I just want to thank Amy Willis and Julie. Um, who are stepping off the board. Um, maybe you're going to acknowledge them tomorrow during the meeting, but I know people put in a lot of nights and they have to drive cross lots regardless of the weather unless they can zoom in, uh, which does make going to meetings a lot easier. Um, but it's just been great having, you know, good representation on the board. And I am wondering how you're going to fill the three-year slot. Well, generally what we've done is we've um, put it out on Front Porch Forum and other uh, public um, places to look for people to fill that slot. And then we take applicants and interview them. And at the end of the day, we appoint somebody. And it's only for one year. So it's a temporary appointment to fill the slot for one year. After the year comes up, it's town meeting again. And anyone is welcome to run for that position. There will be two years left at that point. So someone would be running for the additional two years. The person that is serving the one year that we appoint sometimes chooses to run for the two-year position. That two years are left. So that's how that process works. So if you are um, anybody that's on this uh, Zoom wants to apply for that position, what well, you're welcome to do so. Thank you. That sound good? Oh, Mr. Duane again. Uh, and uh, Tell me if this is okay. When we get to article one that we're just gonna quickly pass over, should I mention that there's an open term and that select board will be putting out more information about it? Sure. Yeah. Just to get people's attention. I mean, what happened to that is that um, the select board member that was filling that position wasn't sure about um, she could commit the time or not. So it was really late by the time we got um, her response answer to whether she's going to run or not. And it was just really too late to beat the bushes and get someone to run. Now you could do a write-in um, and it takes 30 votes to get a write-in candidate that would uh, be voted in. It takes 30 write-in votes for one person. So if someone wrote Mr. Duane in, uh, I'm just saying it. For example. <laughs> for example. <laughs> for example, if someone wrote in Mr. Duane or Mr. Brock, and they got 30 votes, then they would be in, they would be voted in. If they accept it. I guess they would have to accept it. Yes. They couldn't do it without their, right. yeah. Have to sign the so we can't trick you in. No. Okay. You have to sign the yep, consent sir. form. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Another <laughs> example. For example. <laughs> Another thing that we have traditionally done in town meeting, and actually we skipped over it in pre-town meeting, was ask candidates for article one positions to introduce themselves. We have done that in the past, but I thought we did that at the town forum, not at the meeting. Yeah, you, you we, only... we would do it at the town forum. Yes. Yeah. But you, not you, at the meeting. You can only not at the uh, meeting. You can be acknowledged as a elected person on the Australian ballot, and that's it. There, there's no speechifying allowed yes. for yeah. electing people. Yeah. There, there is speechifying allowed for like that Cullig Hubbard Library, for example. So maybe we should. That's just an explanation of an article, however. So maybe it's speech of Circle back to it. Oh no, you you can actually talk and debate and ask questions yes. about non yes personal yes. elections. So you I, could you could have a half hour discussion about Kellogg Hubbard Library, even though yes, it's on the Australian ballot. For example, you could have an hour discussion also, but not for a candidate. Not for candidates. Exactly. Yeah. But we can tonight. And uh, are there any candidates? Here, who would like to say something about their candidacy? Write in or official on the ballot. Please don't speak at once. Yeah, Erica Zimmerman, I think you have something to say. You might change your name. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm on the wrong Zoom, aren't I? Are you a candidate for a position? I am a write in candidate for planning commission. Okay. Okay, so if you get 30 votes, you're taking it on.
Okay. <laughs> Erica Zimmerman is a write-in candidate for Planning Commission. Three-year term, I believe, or is it two? I'm here. One year. <laughs> okay. I didn't think there was Scott, a one year. Scott Hess would like to say something as well. Yeah, I was just finishing up with yeah. um, I Kevin think, McCall. I think, I think so, too. It's not one year. They don't have one-year candidates. Okay. Uh, Mr. Hess, Scott Hess, were you going to introduce yourself as a candidate for a select board position? He's muted. muted. Okay. So if you want to say something, you need to unmute yourself, Scott. <laughs> He's leaving. <laughs> He's done with that. You're muted, Scott. You have to unmute. He's not there. And he's yeah, up. He, he, he walked into another box. Oh, he's in another box. <laughs> oh, oh, there he is. Like people in portraits. I was looking at his box. <laughs> Mr. Hess. I am unmuted. Hello. Oh, very good. Thank you. Did you have um, something to say? I do. I do. I just, um, I am running for Scott Hess. I am running for the two year position for the select board. And I would be honored and uh, thrilled to serve and represent the town of East Montpelier. Are you running unopposed, sir? Um, I am running unopposed, but that doesn't mean I'll be elected. There is there is a possibility of right in. That could be a right in. Yes, there could be one more than his opposition. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there, 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 the there could there could be a, there could be a coup. Um, we're not sure, but um, okay. at this point, I am running on the ballot unopposed, but that doesn't mean I will be re I'll be elected. That's true, but you might get one vote. One vote. I, I, I'm, I'm going to spend the entire night up deciding on whether I'm going to vote for myself or not. <laughs> that and does if not it's on the affirmative, then I've got not, a shot. So that doesn't give us confidence if you can't vote for yourself. Well, I've got, I've got a debate. I can't, I can't take matters lightly. I have to make sure that I'm a qualified <laughs> candidate that can represent the town of East Montpelier in a proper. In, you know, in a proper and responsible way. Right. I'm glad you take that seriously. I do. So I will um, okay, decide on my own privately when I go into the ballot box tomorrow um, okay. while, while I'm working the polls tomorrow from one to four. Isn't that a conflict of interest that you're going to vote for both <laughs> and also working the polls? I, I, will not be, I will not be helping people to decide on who they're voting for. Okay. All right. Oh, well, you'll be stuffing the ballot box. <laughs> I, I will. I will not. There. There will be a. Um, a strict controls. Yeah, strict controls. You will be monitored, <laughs> I believe. Sir. You will be monitored. Yes. Yes, I will. Yes. Uh, there's cameras. Yeah, there's, there's cameras. <laughs> Anyway, I, I think I've said more. I think I've said more than enough in digging myself enough of a hole. But I appreciate. But I. But I appreciate anyone's support, and. Um, and you can and you can contribute to my pack. <laughs> oh, he's I would like to say thank you too for Scott for serving on the planning commission for over 10, 12 years. So thank you so much. And I'm in I'm excited that you're gonna move on up the ladder. <laughs> thank you, Kim. It's been it was a it, it's, it's been a pleasure and a joy working with Kim. And she was the one that talked to me. Her and Jean Vissering talked me into uh joining the planning commission. It is it's been uh, it's been a thrill for uh, for that many years. So happy to help out in another matter and uh, lend some expertise to the select board on the on the workings and what goes on at the planning commission since I've been involved in that for a long time. So, but thank you all. Wow, that was a big speech. So, um, <laughs> do we it, have it, it, is, it, it, it is it, it is not my Trump speech. It's just my speech. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's not getting involved. Erica um, Zimmerman put in the chat that she's clarifying that she's running for the open two-year position. Yeah. The three-year positions have candidates on the ballot. Oh, yeah, for the we, planning committee. We figured that out. Oh. Very good. Oh. So, you so there are that. other candidates for other positions. They just don't happen to be here tonight. I know there's another one for planning commission. Uh, Mia Stone is running. My and own. Maya Stone, My is there another one for planning commission running? Or is it just two? It would be three. There is another one, gentleman, um, Nick Nicholas or Nico, I something. So there's yeah. three candidates there, and 
Just the one for the select board. Okay. All right. So I think we've used up. Rachel and Ken. I still have my hand raised. I'm oh, on another um, subject. Yes. <laughs> Ask some questions. We we would like some. You can go, Rachel. Oh, I'm just going to be very brief. Um, just circling back to Four Corner Schoolhouse, I just realized Hobie's away and I won't be able to attend tomorrow. Um, so I hope somebody, if any questions come up, I'll, you can call me if nobody from the schoolhouse is there who can answer. But we didn't organize beforehand to see, you know, that somebody would be there. Generally, well, traditionally, that's not a hot topic. It's generally not a hot topic. So, but right. anyway, that's all. Thank you. I think I think you'll be okay. I think so. But we'll too. throw you under the bus if you so desire and you're not there. What was that? I said I'll throw you under the bus if you so desire and you're not there. Oh, <laughs> oh, I knew I could count on you, Seth. Thank you. Okay. Yes. <laughs> so I just want to clarify. Did you ask for us to call you from the floor of the town meeting if there are questions? No, 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 no. If there are questions, oh, if there are questions, yeah. You're welcome to call and um I'm happy to answer them if okay. I can. Um, yeah, but usually there are no questions. Right. There right. May, okay. There may be somebody else from the schoolhouse there who can answer the questions as well. Okay. Well, we'll we'll try to cross that bridge when we get to it. Okay. Yeah. You have a question? I do. You're muted. Oh yeah. Fire away. Um, I've got like three questions. <laughs> um, okay. So after listening today for a while on VPR, just about town meeting and everything, it started me to wonder um, how we're going to get input from people within the community on our ARPA money, because the state is having a really hard time um, deciding what to do with their even ARPA money, because they're trying to get it through committees and things like that. And I think we have the same problem as a you know, as a town, what we're going to do with it. Um, and I know we have a 16 cent tax increase and wondering why we can't use some of that funding for one-time expenses. So just the question to the select board is, is who's, when is that going to start to be decided and how and why we didn't have it like put on the ballot or something like that to, to make those decisions earlier. And then the next question I have is, um, the state is also looking at a, you know, uh, proposal to have properties looked at throughout the state and having a, I forget what the, they call it. Um, maybe Erica's, you know, shaking her head. I forget what it's called, a statewide appraisal, appraisal. system. Yes, yeah. statewide appraisal system. And what, you know, what that is telling me is that the state is really screwed up on appraisals, having the towns doing appraisals. And so therefore that what we have to look at is what really the purpose of having elected listers are because they're not even appraisers. <laughs> you know, they are not educated in that line of work they they're just you know voted people onto the to the you know into the town office and they make no sense to have someone who doesn't even know what listings are what property values are and things like that so those are my three questions to the select board to start looking at okay let me just try to answer the ARPA question first so we haven't clearly defined the uses that we, that we can use our upper money for yet. Um, when we do so, we'll be putting it out to townspeople on uh, potential ideas to use the upper money for certain things or what we have for ideas in the town. We have some ideas ourselves, but it's probably fair to put it out to the town at large in the beginning. But we have to define what we can use it for first. Um, we did give away the 100000 to CV Fiber, which was an allowed use, and that was something that was going to benefit all the townspeople to get uh, better broadband access. Um, but there's $662,000 left. Some of that can be used for one-time expenses within the town, and we're looking at doing that to try to lower the tax rate for 2023-24. 
Um, so we're still looking at that. Um, and that's where that's at. I do think we need to consider whether we need to create a committee. I think it is going to be overwhelming for yeah. me to be yeah. trying to take yeah. every comment from right. if County Road is any indication yeah. of what yeah. this is going to pull a lot more comments from our residents than right. that. And it is going to quickly become a yes. very overwhelming process. So now, some towns have not decided to do that. They decided that yeah. the select board had the knowledge and um, and they were elected to represent the people and they put that into various projects that they knew they needed money for. So there's that option. But the other option is to put it out to townspeople by some kind of mechanism, public mechanism, and then to channel that to a committee and they would come up with some recommendations. Well, I, I would like to say that how do we vote that the select board has the ultimate authority? Because the townspeople, as you can see, aren't very engaged to what the expenses are for the town and and things like that. So I, how do we put it out to the townspeople to say, yes, let's let's have ideas in this category or or focus on these, you know, issues like helping with taxes and helping, you know, maybe with some other high items that might be on the capital improvement committee, you know, budget. And um how how do we how do we focus that attention so that we well, can give the select board the ultimate authority I think or the know. town office? So the the feedback that I received from Katie Buckley and she is the VLCT essentially head of their kind of federal grant you name it but VLCT she's the ARPA lead with VLCT. Um, her what what she said that she's trying to advise towns to do is the towns to your point can the select board knows that there are certain infrastructure needs that the town has so what she's trying to advise towns to do is to identify those needs that you know you need to do use earmark funds i should say to to cover those things that that need to happen and then determine what that bucket is that is left that would go for public comment. So that's the advice that she passed to me. That, and I've, I've said this to the board, to the select board previously um, already, that because she just said that it, in, in her opinion, it's a dangerous proposition for everybody to be eyeing that total fund. The, the town garage is a problem. Yeah. This isn't going to buy us a town garage, <laughs> to be clear, um, yeah. the, the ARPA funds alone. However, they could they could give us a good study to determine what the needs are for the town garage and what we need to do there to then help us build that plan going forward to replace the town garage. So these are things that the select board knows the town needs that to Kim's point, every resident likely is not aware. Yeah. Um, it, even if they've even driven by the town garage, but to, to even to, to understand that there, that that is a definite need that the town has. One of the things that we've been waiting to understand uh, what we are allowed to use the funds for and what not. And wh where are we in that conversation? Well, I, mean, I brought the, the ARPA presentations to the select board yeah. right when I first started. So we can bring that and look that it's a pretty wide scope of what we what we can use the funds for. Last um, I heard there was still uncertainty about it though. Is that- is The, that the state says there's no uncertainty. I'm this. uncertain as to how we can go back. That's what we're trying to figure out. But frankly, just haven't had a lot of time to put a lot of effort yeah. into into the details. But um, is how how we can go backwards. That's what I'm more confused about. Yeah, but because we've spent money on land digitization, for example, I'm not sure how far back we can go and recoup and say we've incurred expenses last year, two years ago that we want to apply to ARPA. Thank you. So I, I think it's fair to say that we're still trying to figure it all out. And we will get it figured out fairly soon. But I believe the select board does have the ultimate authority on that money, where it would be spent. I mean, we do, we will solicit public input for some of it. And, but ultimately we would make that decision. But we would get public input, of course, mm -hmm. whenever appropriate. Yeah. 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 Does that answer your question, Kim? Yes, thank you. And what was the next question? Well, it was wondering whether you could use it on the to help offset the tax increases this year because it's like sixteen cents on the dollar, well, and that's pretty high impact for the townspeople. You could use ARPA just simply as a revenue source. Yes, we could just call it revenue. And yeah, but we want to be careful. Budget. We want to just use it for one-time expenses, 
that are impacting our budget for 23, 24, or if we have a shortfall. There, there is potential to use that money to offset the tax increase to some extent. But just to be clear, it's only 5.8 cents on the municipal side. The other projected 10 cents is on the school side that we have no control over. And that's because for a lot of different reasons, the uh, CLA has dropped tax properties have sold for a lot of money in the town. That means we're gonna get less money from the state and also declining enrollment in the school has a big impact also. And, all, and many towns are facing the same problem. Every town around us is the same problem. Uh, but you had another question at the end of the three questions. The other one was with regards to the state looking at statewide appraisals and right. what our town is doing with regards to the listers and and yes. having unexperienced listers who know nothing about appraisals getting voted yeah. in to determine our appraised property values. Okay, so that's been an ongoing discussion for several positions that are within the town the elected positions. One is it internal auditors and that many towns have done away with. The other is the elected listers. And that's also been a big discussion. At this point, we've decided, more or less decided, to form a committee that could study those two positions. Now, I think that Scott has proposed the statewide appraisal service or change because he's concerned about the unevenness of appraisers within each town. So by going to a standardized system, they're hoping to get it more standard, but I don't think that's been implemented yet on the state side. But looking at it from the town point of view, we've had this discussion at select board level for the last year. And the last thing we left to that is we probably should form a committee to study whether we want to do away with elected listers and elected auditors versus hiring an auditor or we already hire an auditor. We don't even need an internal auditor anymore. The only thing that they really do is statutorily, they are supposed to do the town report. Um, but we yeah. could hire the, the charter town. could help with that. I mean, What's where that? are our form? We do have a committee that looked at the charter and they yes. are formed and may be able to help with that. Yeah, and I think that's a good idea is um, to reform that committee and to look at some elected positions. But to be clear, on the list or position, you do not have to go through the charter change. You can elect that at right. uh, a straight right. ballot or a town meeting. So any more questions? No, thank you. Ray, uh, Erica has one. Oh, yeah? You have a question, Erica? I do. Um... It was, as I listened to Kim and you discuss the ARPA funds, it occurred that to me that um, the town committees might be a source of input on the needs of the town, as well as the, the general public. And mm -hmm. it, I, I always believe it's good to kind of reciprocate with people who are volunteering by asking for their input. And mm -hmm. Um, so offering a forum for the town committees to present what they would see as priorities might be interesting. It might feed the feed the idea pool. Yeah, we'd have to all know what the what the parameters are, of course. Right. Right. Yeah, we'll definitely be working on that. Right now, we're going to get through. The, we've been working budget, et cetera. We've been very busy with various things. After town meeting, there's usually a time that we can start digging into some of these other things that we haven't been able to completely to finish up. So that's probably what's going to happen. After town meeting, we'll form committees and we'll work on the ARPA stuff and also on the elected positions that we've talked about the last year. Um, any other questions? I just wanted to say too. Oh. Yeah, no, go ahead. Yeah, the, the Capital Improvement Committee, Erica, has put the question out to all these committees annually, and most of them don't come back with much. And so, yeah. therefore, just to let you know, um, we would really encourage, the Capital Improvement Committee would really encourage any committees that need anything over $5,000 to also come back to the Capital Improvement Committee. And I know, for example, that we're going to be working with the select board in things like the the town garage, how to uh, if we get have to deal with uh, sidewalk maintenance in the future and things like that. So 
we okay. we're we are encouraging the committees to touch base all the time. Yeah. Okay. I think we're good on our town forum. Nobody else has anything to say? Just like an auction, you have one more chance. Mr. Dwayne? All set, thank you. Okay. Well, thank you everybody for participating. We had a good discussion, which is nice. It warms us up for town meeting and it prepares us for uh, answering questions that we may have from the town meeting floor. It's a warm up, um, right? It is. Yeah. <laughs> uh, often we get questions that we want to put some research into. Oh, absolutely. Uh, so thank you. We're going to move on to our town, our regular select board meeting. Um, and we're going to close the town forum at about 730.